Good morning, everyone. In this video, we're going to find the splitting field for the polynomial x cubed minus 5 over the rational numbers. And the directions say that we should write the solution with as little redundancy as possible. So we'll get back to that. So uh, I start by taking this polynomial x cubed minus 5 and looking for a root. And well, pretty quickly, we see we get a cube root of 5. Right? Because if I take the cube root of 5 and I cube it, I will get 5. And so, of course, and if I subtract 5, I'll get 0. Now, the issue is how to get the other roots. And when you have a polynomial of the form x to the n minus a, it's pretty standard about how we're going to find the other roots. Right. So one of the roots is going to be an nth root of a, and then we're going to take an nth root of 1. So we're going to take e to the 2 pi i over n. Okay, We know that's an nth root, because if you take e to the 2 pi i over n and raise it to the nth power, you get e to the 2 pi i, which is equal to 1. If you don't see that, you have to go back to the, the cosine formula, for example, um, cosine and sine. So we'll get, okay, cosine of 2 pi plus i sine of 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi, that's equal to 1, sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, so the sum is equal to 1. Uh, if you want to see it in terms of a picture in general, so here we're working in the complex plane, and if I say take some ray that goes out with radius 1 and has angle theta, then this point is e to the i theta. So if I'm e to the 2 pi i, well, that means 2 pi, that's going to be over here. All right, well, since the radius is 1, that actually has to be the point 1. Okay, so that's what an nth root of unity looks like. And, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so if we go back up to x to the n minus a, let me give a quick name here. Beta will be e to the 2 pi i over n. That's our nth root of unity. So I claim all of the other roots are going to look like take nth root of a, multiply it by beta, and then take the nth root of a and multiply it by beta squared. So why is this working? Well, when I take nth root of a to the nth, I get a. If I take nth root of a times beta to the n, nth root of a times beta to the n, well, nth root of a to the n is a, and beta to the n, well, we just said beta to the n is 1. So this is actually just a again. So taking beta squared and raising it to the n, that's the same as beta to the n squared, so that's still going to be 1. And I can keep doing this. I'll get nth root of a beta to the n minus 1. Okay. And just looking at the, the picture we had down here, beta squared, what would that be? That would be e to the 4 pi i over n, and beta cubed would be e to the 6 pi i over n. Um, those are all going to give me different angles as I go around uh, the circle. right? So I'll get uh, n minus 1 different angles as beta has an exponent of 1 through n minus 1. All right, so these are all different values. And so I found n roots, since x to the n minus a has degree n, those must be all the roots. Okay, so we go back up to x cubed minus 5. Since it's a cube, all right, we're going to let alpha be e to the 2 pi i over 3. So then my roots will be q root of 5 alpha and q root of 5 alpha squared. Okay, now once I have the roots, once I have the roots, then I know I can find my splitting field. And I find it just by adjoining all the roots to q. So the splitting field will be q adjoin the q root of 5, q root of 5 alpha, q root of 5 alpha squared. Okay, but... If I'm trying to be as 
efficient as possible, right? As little redundancy as possible. Then, gosh, it feels a little redundant writing cube root of 5 all over the place. Once I have the cube root of 5, I don't need to write it again as long as I have the alpha around. So if I have cube root of 5 and I have alpha, then I certainly get cube root of 5, I get their product, and I get alpha squared, and so I'll get the product with alpha squared. So certainly, if I have this bottom field extension, I'll get the top field extension. On the other hand, if I take, say, the cube root of 5, and I square it, so cube root of 5, and I square it, and I multiply by the cube root of 5 alpha, then I'm just going to get 5 alpha. If I divide by 5, then I'll get alpha. So in fact, if I have this top field, I'll have cube root of 5, there it is, but I also can use field operations to get myself alpha. So I'll also be containing this field, so they must be equal. Okay, and that's about as, you know, lack of redundancy as we're going to go for.